Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sangle, one of the hosts. I'm joined, as always, by Megan Hibbard, and it is April. Can you believe that? April the 3rd. April showers bring May flowers. But what I've noticed living, that's what they say, said in Indiana where I grew up. Mm. You grew up in North Carolina. Did they say that? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's kind of true. It's Maybe like they're up there. Say, I think it's just a saying. Yeah. But you know what? In South Carolina, it's not true. March showers bring April flowers because it's a month earlier. Yeah. And we're going to talk about uh, an important topic for, uh, this year. We've chosen with the podcast to focus on a specific theme. Mm-hmm. And so we have a theme. Theme. I want you to write a theme. Name that movie. A Christmas Story. Oh. Yeah, that's right. But we're going to have a theme. And what is the theme? A theme. The theme. Of this month. The theme for April is preparing. So yeah. this month we're going to be discussing how you can prepare for upcoming things. So like taxes, summer vacation. Oh, yeah. Those are doing 12 holidays. days. Holidays different things like that. So it's never too early to prepare. And today, specifically on this episode, we're going to be talking about how you can prepare for next year's tax season. Now, a lot of you have already filed your taxes. You've already got your refund. You've already spent your refund. You've already done all the thing. But we want to help you prepare for next year because maybe this year you didn't get the refund that you wanted or you didn't get the things didn't go your way, maybe. So let's help prepare for next year. So it's interesting, you know, when I grew up, there was a common phrase that has went away for a couple decades almost. And that is, if you get a refund, you're really giving the government an interest-free loan. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that statement? Mm -hmm. Well, that hasn't been really true because like, if you had the money, you couldn't make interest anyhow because banks were paying nothing. The big banks, many of them are still paying 0.01%, which if that is you, the Lord bless you. Please move your money to Marcus.com, Ally.com. You can look on our Next Steps area of the website to find out the banks that we like. And the reason we like them is dollar minimum balance, no fees, and they're FDIC insured. And they pay really high interest, like 3.75 to 4% now. Yeah. That's yeah. really amazing. So anyhow, uh, we want to help you prepare for that because that has become a relevant phrase again. Mm-hmm. You are giving the government an interest-free loan. Now, we really want to help you prepare for next year's tax season because the big, there's a big question. Did you owe or did you receive a refund this year? Mm-hmm. Did you owe taxes more than you've already paid or did you receive a refund this year? And then we want to ask a question to follow that up. What is that question we want to ask as a follow-up? Yeah. If you owed or did you receive yeah. a refund? So did you want to receive a refund each year? So that's the question, yep. right? We're preparing yep. for next year. Right. Do, do you, they want to what? Say that question again. Do you want to receive a refund each year? Do you want to do that? Now, that's really important because many people like to get a refund. It it's a good. It's a forced <laughs> savings plan. Yeah. It's a lot. A lot of people, it's the largest yep. un un allocated money that they receive, Mm -hmm. right? The paycheck, a lot of it's already allocated. And so they like that, but, and some people use it automatically. They use it to fund vacation. They Mm -hmm. automatically use it for something. Mm -hmm. Uh, But here's what I would just say is, do you want to receive a refund each year? Because that's become very relevant again, knowing that you could make interest on that money. Mm -hmm. So some people get a thousand dollar tax refund. Some people get a $4,000 $4,000 tax refund. Some people get like a $10,000 tax refund. Mm-hmm. And think about that at 4% interest, mm-hmm. $10,000. Well, that's going to make you like $400 in interest. Yeah. $400. Mm-hmm. Like that's not, that's not chump change. Yeah. That's $33 and 33 cents a month. That can, that can buy some stuff. Yeah. And you're giving that to the government. So that's a question we want you to answer as you're driving your car, you're exercising, you are running like Forrest Gump, whatever it is you're doing as, you re- as you're listening to this podcast. Do you want to receive a refund each year? Or what is another question? Yep. So the other one would be, do you want to break even? Perhaps you want to break even. Mm-hmm. Do you want to owe something? Yeah. Now, listen. Listen. Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. <laughs> that's a meme. Uh <laughs> 
you may want to owe something mm. because if you don't owe too much. Now, listen, if you if you have estimated quarterlies and all that stuff, if you don't pay that and you owe too much. The government's going to charge you the prevailing interest rate mm. for not paying it. Yeah. If they're estimated quarterlies, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But the bottom line is um, you may want to owe a little bit of something because if you can count on you <laughs> to save that extra money, if you make adjustments to your paycheck such that more money is sent home to you, which means you're therefore not sending to the government which will stack up for a refund mm -hmm. next February or so when you file, um, you could earn interest on it all year long. If you can hold yourself accountable, if you know, if, you, if you've been following what we're teaching and you have that good old bud get, mm -hmm. isn't that what I was pronounced? Or is it budget? Is it bud get? <laughs> <laughs> You're staring at me like, bud get? What's like, a bud get? I don't know. <laughs> it's a budget. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, if you're living by the budget and you're climbing up that ladder and you found that you are that you can trust you, mm. it may make sense for you to break even or owe a little something. And and I just wanted to really say, you know, interest rates are up substantially and you can actually make real money. Mm. Say real money, right? Real. real money. And do you like real money? I like real money. I like real the money. The folding money type, right? <laughs> Not just coins. I want some folding money. Have you ever heard that lately? <laughs> have Not some lately, fold but money. I've heard it. <laughs> yeah, that's an old timer phrase, but I like some folding money. And if you receive that large tax refund each year, you could have been putting that on deposit at one of these banks, receiving three and a half to four percent, maybe even more mm -hmm. in the near future. And in effect, you are giving the government a zero percent interest loan. Now, how does one adjust their paychecks so that they can get more money coming home. If you're one of those that always gets a refund, we're talking about what? What's our theme this month? Preparing. Preparing. So we're, we're thinking about it so that you can pr be prepared for tax season next year. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You're listening to this podcast and we're helping you plan like a year ahead. Look how awesome you are. Amazing. Go you. Okay. Go. So, uh, you know, listen, you rule. Burger King says so. Yeah. BK, have it your way. You rule. <laughs> all the kids sing that. I don't know why. It's, it's catchy. They tested that. And all the 13-year-old boys that hang out with my 13-year-old boy, <laughs> they say that. They think it's funny. So you rule. And you're planning. And, and how we, relevant you are. Uh, let me get back to my question. I am so relevant. <laughs> I am relevant. I'm as relevant as shag carpet, okay? So, uh, a green shag carpet or copper tone. Of course, it, you know, we talk about increasing, ex uh, uh, how do you get more money coming home? Well, what do you have to do to do that? Yeah, increase your exemptions. Okay, increase your exemptions. Mm -hmm. So, what are those exemptions? Those exemptions are on that form you filled out long ago mm -hmm. when you were employed. It's a W-9. There's got to be a more, a simpler form. W-9? W-2? W-4? W I think it's a W four W seventeen. It's a W W D forty. There's all the forms. So I, it's actually a form W four uh, mm -hmm. is what it is. The, the W nine is if you're doing contract income. You just make it. So effort. we're gonna pull it up on a screen here, and you can actually see it. Right, we got the W four form. It's the employees withholding certificate. Mm. And nice. And you complete, look at this, it just says it at the top, complete Form W-4 so that your employer can withhold the correct federal income tax from your pay. Give Form W-4 to your employer. Your withholding is subject to review by the IRS. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? So you can change exemptions, and you also can get more or less coming home based on whether or not you file single or married filing separately or married filing jointly or head of household. That matters too. Now, you don't have to file hmm. uh, this form with how you'll actually file your taxes at the end of the year. Okay. So I've had people who fill out this form and they, they file with 10 exemptions, right? Because they don't want to owe any, they, they don't, they don't want to send any taxes right now. Hmm. And when they say you're withholding a subject to review by the IRS, they might let that go one cycle, but if it comes tax time and you don't pay your taxes then hmm. that you owe, well, then they're not going to allow you to do that anymore. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's interesting as you look at this, uh, it gives you really clear instructions. And I really do. We'll, we'll have a link to Form W-4, yeah. which will be great. And you can fill this out. Now, one of the things that is interesting is uh, it, that a lot of people, they wonder, okay, let's say I got a $4,800 refund. That's what I got uh, from federal income. Mm. And that's about $400 a month. So... Uh, 
if you're going to make adjustments to your exemptions, it feels like you're doing it blindly when you're filling out W-4. Like, I, I don't know, if I change my exemptions by one, how much does that change my take-home pay? Right. Well, you will be asking a very good question. And what is that question? If I change my exemptions, what will my take home, my new take home yeah. pay be? That's yeah. a good question, That's right? A great question. So uh, do you know any way that we could actually know that number? Yes. Yes. What is that? There is a website. Yes, there's a website. That and will tell you. This website is not our website. It is not. But we're going to promote someone else's website because it is helpful. so cool. And who who has this website? Yep. So it is paycheckcity.com. That's right. Yep. And you can, you might be thinking, well, that works great if you're on salary, but I'm hourly. Well, they do both. So they have it for salary and for hourly that you can figure out what's best that's right. And so we're going to go in here and let's just type in some numbers. And it is important to know that if you want your state mm -hmm. in there, it's very important to go to the very bottom of the page. I do encourage you to check it on YouTube. Go to the very bottom of the page. Uh, it does say at the top, select a state next to the calculator. It's kind of hidden. It'll take you to the bottom of the page. And we're going to hit South Carolina because we are South Carolinians. Now, if you're Tennessean, you don't have state income tax. If you're Floridian, you don't have state income tax. Mm -hmm. Texan. Wyoming, you know, several of these states don't have state income taxes. Uh, so we go here to st South Carolina and let's say the check date is, you know, um, I don't know. We'll just choose a date. It's there. And let's say our gross pay is 4,000 and it's going to be per, per pay per period. And the pay frequency is monthly. Okay. So it's $48,000 salary. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And let's say that we're doing this at the end of the March. So we're doing it for April pay. So we've already been paid three times. So that'd be $12,000 so far. You can just pull your pay stub and get this information. You can use your 2020 W-4 form, okay, which has not, it's not been modified since then. And you can say, hey, I'm filing, married filing jointly, and I don't have two jobs. And I am going to go down here. And um, all these things that says that might apply, you can just look at your pay stub and it'll be there. So you can say how many allowances, okay? So I'm going to look at it and say um, I'm going to have total number of allowances of, you can click the question mark and it will say the total number of allowances. I'm going to say two, okay? And then we go down here and we hit calculate. And boom. Here's our new paycheck. So you can adjust it, and it says, hey, my net pay is going to be. Now, if you're contributing to a retirement account, there's a spot for you to put in how much you're contributing. If you're contributing towards health insurance, it, it, it puts it all in there. It calculates your Social Security, your Medicare, your state taxes according to the state you've chosen, and your federal taxes. Hmm. Isn't that awesome? That awesome? And so what I like is there's a button at the bottom where you can hit edit. So you don't have to start over. You can go back. So let's hit that calculate number again. And what $4,000 take on pay with a total of two allowances, um, we two exemptions, we get 3,394 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, if we want to bring home some extra money, uh, you know, let's go to, let's say we had six chosen. Okay. Six of those, six of those allowances there. Let's say it's somebody's first job and they, they don't understand necessarily that okay. changing. So let's the say they have no allowances. But what? And if so, if it's someone's first job and they're like allowances two six, what are you saying? I don't understand what you're saying. Yes. So what would you say from like a practical, simple? This is what this is. Form W four walks you through it. So let's yeah. go back to that form. It's a great question. So it basically says, um, you know, you basically say um, here. Uh, you, you claim your dependent and other credits. So if your total income will be $200,000 less, which applies to almost everybody, you multiply the number of qualifying children under age 17 by 2,000. You multiply the number of other dependents by, you know, 500 bucks. And then you add the amounts and you add those, you know, to the amount of any other credits. Okay. And then if you claim deductions, anything else, else other than the standard deduction, you can put it here. Okay. So as you go through, um, this form, it actually transfers over dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. So let's go over here um, and say you have no children in your example and you're not married, okay? 
So you have your, just you. It's just you, so you're filing single. So let's go back over here and edit this and say, hey, uh, I am single and I don't have any other withholding and I'm going to claim no allowances because of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not even claiming myself. You calculate it and it says, hey, you're only going to bring home $3,167. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you don't have any, you don't, you know, children mm -hmm. are a tax on the household. Yes. So they don't tax you as much. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah. So single people definitely carry a bigger load. Isn't mm -hmm. that crazy? But you can just make adjustments. And so I like your question. What if they're just starting a job? Well, you can, you know, to the penny what your income is going to be. Mm -hmm. You can know it. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're wanting to make adjustments, you can just go back and edit it and say, hey, you know what? I, I am single, but I'm going to marry put it in here as my filing status is married filing jointly. You calculate it. Instead of $3,100 coming home, you get $3,321 coming home. Mm -hmm. And it, this, this could also be used to help you understand tax law. Yeah. So I do encourage you guys to check this out. It's a great way to adjust your compensation so that more money comes home. And we'll have a link to the show notes yeah. to make sure that you have access to this. Be sure especially if you have state income tax, to choose your state's form so that your state law is being applied mm -hmm. towards your compensation. So what if somebody has like gig income, they're 1099 subcontractor, subcontractor they're self-employed. What are some things they need to make sure they're watching for? Right. So this is real estate agents, a lot of hairstylists. It's people that do uh, independent work like photography, videography. It's for people that do uh, graphic design, all the people on Fiverr, Upwork, and all these places. Uh, those people need to really pay close attention to paying their estimated quarterly tax payments. If you've now, – now, I I have not paid estimated quarterly tax payments in at least seven years or eight years. I just haven't done it. Interest rates have been near zero. So the penalty, which is interest that I would owe on money unpaid, has been virtually zero. Um but now it matters. So I've had a conversation with Matt. We all know Matt. We like Matt. Matt makes payroll happen, uh, our financial officer. I, I've told him, and he's come to me actually too, saying, hey, we need to be religious about sending the quarterly estimated this year. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would just encourage you to do. Work with your accountant. I do encourage you to have an accountant, an expert. Get that calculation of, hey, what is your estimated quarterlies? And just go ahead and forward those federal government. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and forward those on. Mm -hmm. I, I, listen, don't get married to it because it's going to leave one time or another. And it's just not going to be very good. So I really encourage you uh, to go ahead and make those estimated quarterly payments. If you don't know what that means, just Google estimated quarterly tax payments and how to do that. And the federal government, the IRS, will show you how to do that. Mm. Yep. We have some links for everybody. Yes. Uh, salary uh, payroll calculator, an hourly payroll calculator. Be sure to select your state. Any yeah. last other questions or statements you want to make? Yeah. I mean, I think it can definitely be confusing, but it doesn't have to be confusing. Like yeah. It can feel overwhelming of like, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I claim this? Should I do that? But I think this is a great resource that allows you to see it because yeah. a lot of times you, you do feel like you're kind of blindly like okay let's pick three sure three sounds great yeah and i would just tell you this for if you, this is for if you're a large company or yeah. if you're just running numbers but for small organizations and you know the person who runs payroll you can go talk to them mm -hmm. like for our team there's like 27 of us or something you, you can just call matt yeah. hey matt i would like to change it to this can you run some numbers and figure out where i need to be yeah. and that can guide you another question can can people change this anytime you know what? I don't know the full answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that you can change it. At, I know you can change it at least once a year. Mm -hmm. um, some I believe in some payroll systems, they will allow you to change it multiple times a year. Um, but I think they get a little, uh, a little squirrely, a little squirrely mm -hmm. if you keep changing it paycheck to paycheck. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know the answer to that question. And I like that. Thanks for stumping me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you know the answer, go ahead and comment it and leave the reference link, the source link in YouTube. We would love to see that. Or if you're watching on Facebook, just leave it right there. We'd love to hear from you guys. It's an honor to serve you. Hey, it's April. It's springtime. Enjoy it. And uh, get your money in line. Prepare for tax season next year. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.